Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. I'm John. There's my boom lift. Many of you saw me do a complete rebuild of the boom on this just recently, and that was an awesome project. And I learned some really valuable things in that process. Several of them I learned from you guys. Uh, my awesome audience making comments taught me some things that I think are so important that I wanted to do a video on it. Uh, these are things that I think a lot of people probably aren't aware of, and you really should be. So. I hope you'll watch this video because there's some important lessons in here and thank you guys for commenting and teaching me. The first lesson I'm gonna mention I taught myself <laughs> and that is don't set machinery on fire. <laughs> so because of my experience with this lift, I am making it a non-optional thing. Whenever I am welding, plasma cutting, or have a torch out on a machine, I am going to have a hose or a bucket of water and a fire extinguisher right there beside me. And that's like non-negotiable from here on out. That was scary. So uh, I got really lucky on that one. So here's something I learned. That uh, piece of wire that I removed from this uh, after the fire, that piece of wire that burned up, I thought it was just a little extension, but it was actually a fusible link. A fusible link works much like a fuse. It just looks like a piece of wire. This is a special kind of wire and it's a 14 gauge fusible link and let me see if i can get you a close-up you can actually see that it melted there it can't just be straight copper because copper would melt at 2000 degrees and i've seen what i would call fusible links before and they were obviously designed to be a fuse this was just a piece of wire but apparently there's fusible link wire and that's what that was it's a piece of wire that is protecting the wire beyond it. This is coming from the battery here and comes through and protects this wire. And it's designed basically to melt when, um, when too much current's going through, like a fuse does, but uh, it was the actual wire. I've just never seen that. Anyway, that was a fusible link and uh, I have now replaced it with a 30 amp fuse. So that is again protected. That did exactly what it was supposed to do. When all those wires over here shorted out and a bunch of current was coming from the battery through this wire the link melted and cut the connection and probably saved me some more damage and even a fire in this harness here and it was thanks to all the comments of you guys letting me know that that was a fusible link that uh, this fuse is now here thank you this is a couple fusible links and we are going to play around with them because i'm curious about these things it's a copper colored conductor, but it must be a copper alloy that um, has a very low melting point compared to copper. Copper's melting point is 2000 Fahrenheit. It seems like if your fire protection requires something to reach 2000 degrees and melt, that's not the greatest idea. That's why we're doing this. We're gonna figure out what the heck's going on with these things. The fusible link that was on my machine was a 14 gauge fusible link, which I read is around 38, 39 amps that it can handle. Uh, before it starts to melt. So we're gonna test that too. First thing I need to do is put some connections on the end of this. Now you don't wanna shorten it because there's a certain amount of resistance in this. And everything I read is if you wanna protect a 10 gauge wire, you go two wire sizes down. So 12, 14. So you'd use a 14 gauge to protect a 10 gauge wire. So this has enough resistance and will get hot enough, it's gonna melt before that 10 gauge uh, is damaged by the current. Now before I get too far, I want to do uh, just some kind of quick tests. This is a regular copper wire versus a propane torch. It does actually start to melt. That's impressive. I mean, I guess I've melted copper with a propane foundry furnace, but out here in the open air, wasn't expecting that. Maybe it is just regular copper. Can't be. Then you just use regular wire. It doesn't make sense that it would be regular copper. Let's see what, this is the fusible link off of the machine and let's see what it does. All right, 
So it started out, I wasn't like hitting it full force because I expect it to melt fast, but I was wrong. I mean, it's, it's maybe a little bit lower melting point than the copper, but not that much. It takes quite a lot of heat to melt that thing. Okay, so now I have a battery here. I've got a 30 amp fuse right here and this is regular wire so and this should be able to handle 30 amps so the fuse should blow and that would be the end of it I would think so keep an eye on that fuse yep now one thing I do know that they say a fusible link is like a slow blow fuse it will tolerate higher amperage for a short period of time before it starts to melt so this is a 40 amp. I would think that this fuse is going to blow as well. Let's see what happens here. Fuse blew. So now I've got two inline fuses that are in parallel with each other. We're coming from the fusible link to this branch connector. One 30 amp line and another 30 amp line. I have a feeling the fuses are still going to blow. I think it's this is so, so slow to react, it's probably going to take a big amperage to make that blow. So 60 amps here, let's see what it does. I think the fuses went. Yep. Alright. Now I have three of them in parallel. I've got two 30s and a 20, so that's 80. And let's see what we get now. The fusible link isn't even hot. These are actually 50 amp breakers, and I'm gonna take one of them out, so I'll have 100 amps, and it's not going to be wasting a fuse. If it blows, you just wait for it to cool off. It's a bimetallic strip in there. All right, we're ready for 100 amps. I just have the fusible link coming to a bolt. This bus bar, so I touch that to the battery. I don't know if these are like fast blow or these might tolerate more than a fuse would, but they're rated at 100 amps. Ooh, that surprised me. I think the breakers are clicking and the fusible link is melting. But it's still connected. <clears throat> that smells terrible. Let me get this outside. The bimetallic strips, you could hear them. They were opening and closing. The fusible link did not blow. 0.3 ohms. It is still intact. That's crazy that it can handle 100 amps. All right, I think you can see what's happening here. We got 150 amps, and we're taking this fusible link to failure. Here we go. Wow, did you see that? Get glowing red hot. I tend to think that is just copper. And uh, boy, it doesn't offer the protection that a fuse does, that's for sure. Yeah, that fuse I put in my lift is a 30 amp and uh, it runs the lift just fine. If I ever have any trouble, I'll put a 40 amp in it. But uh, that's what was there. I guess it did its job, but the way it works is by <laughs> literally melting copper. That's quite a, uh, a significant current flow for that to happen. I don't know how they can call this like a 39 amp. Maybe that website that I got was wrong, but, uh, but I read it on the internet. It's gotta be right. All right, one last thing I wanna do. Here's our fusible link. Here's one strand of the wire, and it measures 10 thousandths. So I've got this copper this is from a motor winding and it measures ten thousandths 
So, I want to see, are they going to melt the same or not? So I'm going to keep them the same length, twist the ends together, and then we're going to short them and see what they do. For science, not because I'm just in the shop screwing around. Okay, so I've got this firmly connected on that side. They're twisted together. Twisted together here, an equal length of single wire. Which one's going to melt first? So I'm just going to grab this whole thing with the pliers and then touch the pliers to the post. So that should do it. Oh, wow. Okay, well the fusible link melted much, much faster. Why is that one not melting? Ah, uh, idiot. It's a motor winding. It's got enamel on it. Let's do this again. That one on top there is the motor winding. This is the fusible link. I used a multimeter. They are continuous. So this should work this time. So place your bets. Motor winding or fusible link? Or about equal? It's just copper. That was identical. Pretty cool. Wonder why they sell it as fusible link wire if it's just copper wire. Right, maybe there's some quality control or something with it just to verify that it's gonna work like a fusible link would be expected to. Had enough of fusible links? Yeah, me too. That was pretty cool though. Hey, big mama. You wanna tell him or you want me to? So it's calving time. There's a, there's one over there. That's Emily's calf. And Big Mama here is what we call bagged up. That's an udder getting ready to support a calf. So this is gonna be her last calf. We're not gonna breed her anymore because of her hip. And uh, well, we'll keep you apprised, see how she does. Many people commented on one subject in particular and taught me so much I've gotta share it with you and that's fire extinguishers. So speaking of fire extinguishers, This is where that little junky fire extinguisher was that didn't work. I think this is 2020. Let me check the date again. Yeah, right there. 2020. So that one is a couple years old. I don't know how old that other one was. I can tell you it was far from new. It, would pro it was probably more than 10 years old. In fact, I'm certain it was. And also several people mentioned that that fire extinguisher had been discontinued. So even though the extinguisher didn't work, still my fault. Um, I was not really that conscious that you need to replace your fire extinguishers or recharge them every 10 years at, at least. So we're back in my shop now and plasma cutter, welder, and torches. I've got a big stationary set and then a portable set. Anytime I'm using those, I'm going to have fire suppression ready to go, like right there. So yeah, I already had the, uh, the big extinguisher here. I decided to, I bought several new extinguishers for various things around my house and, and shop and everything. Oh, and I also have two water buckets in here. There's one over there beside the forge for quenching. And then there's one right here for cooling off stuff that I'm um, grinding on the belt sander. So yeah, I think about that when I'm doing stuff around here that could potentially cause a fire that I've got, I've got water ready and I've got a fire extinguisher ready. It wasn't as accessible as it should have been. I had that thing hanging up there and it was kind of hard to get down. Now it's very visible, easy to get down. I can pick whatever size I need or both. And I learned some things about fire extinguishers too. They are not all the same. So this is a dry chemical fire extinguisher. This is a 10 pound and it's filled with monomodium phosphate, ammonium sulfate, couple other things. Many people told me that these are horribly corrosive to metal. Now, obviously, even with the lift, if you have a fire and it's all, it's, you, need, you, you use it. But 
immediately after using it, you really need to wash it down. It sounds like you need to power wash the heck out of it. It's not just hose it off a little bit and expect it to be okay. Apparently this stuff wreaks havoc on electronics, wiring, so be aware of that. Now there are other types of fire extinguishers. You can get a CO2 fire extinguisher that's filled with liquid CO2 and that's not going to do anything to your metal, but that's not as effective against all types of fires. CO2 extinguishers are rated for class B and C fires, but probably won't work on your most common fire, the class A fire, just your typical combustibles. They also make water extinguishers that you just charge with water and compressed air, infinitely reusable, but those are only good for class A fires. The reason the most common extinguishers around are these corrosive dry chemical type is that they're good for all three types, A, B, and C. I think if you go to the big box stores and Amazon and stuff, these are going to be the kind that you're usually finding. So just be aware, these are very corrosive to metal. The other thing to be aware about these, several people told me, that you are supposed to turn these upside down periodically and make sure the powder has not turned into a solid chunk. Yeah, and this one being new, I can actually feel the powder and hear it, hear it shift like it should. I have some other extinguishers we'll look at, but probably not gonna be able to show it on video, but you know how it is when you've got something in a tube that's solid you turn it over, you're going to feel it go thunk and then come back thunk. And since I was told this, I had several extinguishers that did that. And, um, and what you do about it is, you know, you beat it around, you turn it upside down, you hit it with a soft hammer, you shake it around and you work it until it's loose again. It sounds like the professional people that are checking fire extinguishers do this once a month. Uh, many people said you need to at least do it once a year, uh, which is probably what my target's going to be. But um, yeah, I mean, you don't want it to just turn into a brick at the bottom. And then when you go to use the extinguisher, it doesn't work. Another thing they told me about these that I hadn't considered and is very pertinent to me is mud daubers. If you don't know what a mud dauber is, it's a type of wasp. It likes to build this nest out of mud and they will get in the nozzle of your fire extinguisher and... That wet mud that they pack in there after it dries out will make such a solid plug that the PSI in the extinguisher will not be able to overcome it. And your extinguisher won't work. And I can prove that. Be right back. Remember that extinguisher that didn't work for me? Yeah, that's the one. Well, I can't see a year on it anywhere, except it just jumped out at me now. How did I not see that before? Because I looked. <sighs> I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. I don't want you to know. But mud daubers. Could mud daubers have gotten into the nozzle and clogged it? That is exactly what happened. It is packed full of mud daubers. Now... This extinguisher did have a recall on it, and maybe the mud daubers were the problem, but certainly that's not good. And uh, one thing you can do is just take like one of those foam earplugs and stick it in there. That's never going to adhere so hard that the extinguisher won't be able to blow it out, but it's not going to allow the insects in there to pack it full of mud and block it up. Should I tell you what year it is? Uh that's 1991. That's the year I graduated high school. <laughs> so I don't know. I just thought if the extinguisher said it was full, then it was full and it would work. Um, yeah, that's not the case. Uh, these disposable extinguishers need to be replaced. Uh, I saw every 10 to 12 years. And that leads right into my next thing, which is don't get the disposable ones. Get the refillable ones. Long term, they're going to save you money, but it's more than just that. The refillable ones all have metal valves. They have a, a much higher quality valve that's made to be used multiple times. These are single use, so they make them out of cheap plastic. That's not going to work. These valves are much more likely to fail. You don't gain anything by buying the disposable ones. Uh, and in fact, all you're doing is filling up landfills and wasting resources. The refillable ones, the valve's better. 
And after 10 years goes by, yes, you have to pay to get it refilled, but that's going to be a lot cheaper than buying a new disposable. So don't do the disposables. So all the new ones that I've purchased, which I think we got like five of them, this one's refillable, this one's refillable. They all have metal valves. We're up in my wood shop and here's the fire extinguisher I have up here. This one's a couple years old, also a 10 pounder. Oh, it's actually an eight pounder. But uh, let me, I haven't turned this one over, I don't think ever, because I didn't know about it. Yeah, I just felt it all slide down in one piece. It didn't move and then it, it came down slowly. Not moving. Hmm, maybe it did. Still kind of going in one piece. I don't know if, probably too close. I think it's breaking up, which is good. Metal valve refillable. I think there's still somewhat of a chunk in there, so I'm gonna take a soft hammer, careful not to knock the pin out of place. Give it a little treatment. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely better. I can feel all the powder just immediately shift to the opposite side now. Gauge is right in the middle of the green. Check those fire extinguishers. As for turning those extinguishers upside down periodically and loosening up the powder, I'm sure there are many that are going to work even if you don't do that. Uh, probably the majority of one in people's houses never have that done because people don't know to do it. But it's going to work better. It's going to be much more reliable. It's a good practice to get into. Uh, but don't, you know, if you haven't been doing that, don't assume that your extinguisher's ruined or anything. Or, or, I would still try to use it. What happened this morning, Big Mama? Hmm? Can you tell me? Look at that udder. What happened? What's this over here? That's Big Mama's calf. I won't hurt your calf. Three new calves since yesterday. That bull was busy nine months ago. So that's Big Mama. She just had birth. That's her baby. This is 71 and her baby. Now remember, 71 is Big Mama's several years ago. So you're looking at generations there. Big Mama to 71 to baby. So really, that and 71 are siblings different fathers. Here's something else I learned. Sometimes you get to buy a new tool. So this is a hydraulic test kit. Three hoses, three gauges, and a whole bunch of fittings. Recall that my lift won't telescope in from full extension when it's horizontal. I had intended to go out and fix that and end the video with it, but that turned into a much bigger project and Deserves a video all on its own. So we're gonna we're gonna go into that next week. As I am recording this, uh, the project still isn't done. So unfortunately, have to end this video here. On the bright side, we'll see you next week, and you can always go watch one of my older videos in the meantime, like this one right here.